fire ignites passion and creativity. Free your imagination with the slim, sleek and beautiful new Huawei P8. Amazing technology. Greetings and welcome from the western part of Johannesburg. We're at the Reimse Country Club and it's a massive golf course as you can see in the background and why we're here is we're getting a demonstration of a drone or a, a RPAS is the correct terminology to use and RPAS stands for Remote Piloted Aircraft System and these are the professional drones. These are the drones that are doing all sorts of the professional work, the aerial photography and it's a big business. The first company to get a commercial license from the Civil Aviation Authority was Rocket Mine. And they've invested in 10 drones that cost over 350,000 Rand each. They are one of many companies in South Africa right now uh, that are investing heavily in this kind of technology because really this is the future of unmanned aircraft. You do all sorts of things like maintenance work, even you know looking at mines and looking at uh, you know ag agriculture, for example. You're able to pick up all sorts of uh, things with big data and analyzing all of this. Chris Clark is the CEO of Rocket Mine, the first company in South Africa to get a commercial drone license. Effectively, they're, they're like an airline, but the equivalent of an airline li license. So, Chris, uh, it's a fantastic um, initiative. Is it true? Is it your first? Is it, you like an airline? That's correct, Aki. I think um, it's quite a big achievement and uh, we're quite excited to be one of the first in, in South Africa um, as well as in, in the world. You know, we're even ahead of the States um, on this as well. So we're quite, we're quite looking forward to, to getting up to the skies. Now you were, you were like instrumental in putting the legislation together. We, we assisted the Civil Aviation Authorities that they, they approached us as part of an industry and said, guys, we've never uh, sort of legislated for, for these kind of devices before. Please come and assist us. So uh, for sort of for, for two years, we've been helping them uh, put it all together and, and, and here we are, ready to, to sort of fly. So we, we are from the Ramsar Country Club and uh, I mean these drones are serious business. So these aren't the, the amateur drones that you get that you can play on the weekend, the radio control stuff. This is the real deal. I think these ones cost in the region of 350,000 Rand. Is that right? Can you describe to us what kind of machines you're actually working with here? Correct. So, so today we're going to be flying a little fixed wing unit um, from a company called Sensefly in, in Switzerland. Um, it was designed specifically for the mining environment and surveying applications. So the, for the mines, for instance, it's very, very critically important that whatever data we produce is 98% is, is accurate at, at minimum. So th this drone basically flies over a mine what kind of data are you collecting? Because you can also use it for agriculture, right? But let's look specifically at a, on a mine environment, yes. for example. What, 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 why, are, why would mines want to use drones? Well, uh, to give an example, so currently what mines do who don't have drones, um, if they've got sort of a stockpile that they're mining out of the ground, they send their surveyors to actually walk over this sort of this coal stockpile. Now, if you think about this high-grade quality coal, Aki, um, and you can think about sending someone over it, all of a sudden, the, uh, using in sort of the summer months, um, you can, the coal can spontaneously sort of ignite. So now you've got this major safety factor. Now, using the drones, you can fly from above, above, you know what I mean, 400 feet above the, the sort of the ground. You can photograph the stockpile. You build what we call a 3D point cloud around it, and then we can start calculating volume of of the, um, of the stock bar. So not only are you gathering data, but you're actually doing data analytics. You're taking the data and you're crunching it into some kind of an algorithm. Correct, yeah. This is kind of the sort of the beginning of the big data sort of, uh, of life cycle. We, if you can see, we're wearing a special kind of a jacket, okay? Now we have to comply by the CAA regulations, and this is why you've got your first license. Um, and these are not toys. These are seriously dangerous things if they yes. are in the wrong hands. You actually, I mean, what, what kind of training does one need to be able to operate a drone like yours? A 350,000 Rand drone, yes. of which this company has 10 of them. So, uh, so today we're going to have a flight by, by a guy named Hannes. Um, just for interest sake, he had to go through police clearance. Um, he had to go on a special um, pilot's license. So he's got what they call an RPL license as well. Um, so, and he's, and he's most probably had about sort of 50 hours worth of just simulator work um, just, to, just to be able to get on to the grass today, just to, just to fly. So, um, so it's a serious uh, training course indeed. So Hannes Kierper is going to be the pilot today. He's going to give us a safety briefing. And this is really the, essentially the drone that's going to be uh, used for this, um, this demonstration and it feels incredibly light. It's made of polystyrene but I'm sure there's a, there's a, a fantastic motor in here and here's the fancy camera that's at the bottom of this and I'm just like, Hannes, is this thing going to stay up in the air? Because it's, it's, it's very light and there's a bit of a wind blowing as well. And this will definitely stay up in the air. Serious? No, it will definitely How much power do we have in here, Hannes? Power, yeah, you've got enough to keep it there to fly in 44 kilometers per hour winds. 
so that the drone is strong enough to fly in this wind for and, today. And speed? Speed-wise, we fly about up to 40 kilometers an hour on max cruise speed. Now, I see there's an aerial here and there's an aerial here. What, what are these for? That's your pitot tube, so that's going to measure your wind speed and your wind direction and that's your GPS antenna that's built into your autopilot. That's so your, your camera is built into here. That's your camera. There's right. your camera here and just there there's the go. camera inside. Oh wow, so it's, a, it's a, like a, a normal camera. What kind of camera is this? That's, just a, that's your Canon camera. Canon and it Canon. shoots. And, and, and is it shooting the, the photographs automatically or is it done remotely using a computer? It shoots automatically and that's why you see the cable there is connected uh, to the autopilot so the autopilot will trigger the photos as the flight plan is loaded onto the tablet, that's right. So this thing costs 350,000 bucks? That's correct, yes. Yo! What is so expensive about this? I don't understand. I, I understand you've got the camera, I can understand you've got the engine here, and you've got a bit of technology, but 350,000 bucks? So it's more for your autopilot than the rest oh, of the body, yeah. Okay, so there we go, you can see the screen over here, and this is the software that controls this baby, and I suppose that this is the, the heart of the machine that really controls everything. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is where it all happens over here. Um, I, I'm expecting you to have some sort of a, a, a remote control in your hands. So everything will be done from your um, via the, the seat tuning there, yeah. and then that's going to control the drone. All right. So all yeah. the people must stay please behind the operator at all times. Okay. Then no communication to the pilot via the operations. All questions will be handled afterwards after the flight ops. Otherwise, you're going to distract the pilot from normal operations. Then this is my workstation. From there on, I will keep an eye on the RPS for that side. It's clear from all obstacles. Let's quickly go through the risk assessment here. So I just, if, if I don't listen to you, does that get kicked off the flight? Is it the idea that... That's you, it, exactly, this yes. This is like, this guy's even more stricter than the guys on a on an A380. Okay, we're just going to do a radio call. From there on, we're going to fly our remotely piloted aircraft systems. Uh, Low-level traffic, uh, Zulu Tango, Tango Alpha X-ray is an uh, unmanned aero vehicle operating over at the Ramsach Golf Course. We'll be operating uh, 400 feet above ground level uh, for the next uh, zero 05 minutes. Any conflicted traffic, please advise. Zulu Tango, Tango Alpha X-ray. So let's have a look how we're going to get those drones coming in from, from that side, right? And the distance that they can cover, how long can they be up in the air for and what kind of distances are we able to cover? So uh, we're going to currently um, operate quite, uh, quite reasonably low today, um, most probably under sort of 400 feet. Um, we can go as high as 1,000 feet. Oh, I can see you there in the distance coming across, yeah. Yes. Is it coming towards us? It's going to come in quite low um, and what we're going to do is simulate a sort of a landing and then it's going to take off again um, and we're going to board the landing um, and fly, fly past us. That's smile right. for the pictures. Yes. Eh? Chris, fantastic chatting. Thank you Thank so you. much and Thank good you. luck with Thank your you. business. Fly!